Do your part to prevent the spread as COVID cases climb. Plus, is spring break canceled? It is for some Arizona college students, and it's the last day of Hispanic Heritage Month. A look back at some of the amazing people we have met. 12 at 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials. And now we are live statewide. So a big shout out to all of our viewers, even down in Tucson. We are on TV and on the go on the 12 News at Facebook and YouTube. Hey guys, it's Tram here. COVID cases are climbing once again. The Department of Health Services reporting 1,113 new cases and 17 new deaths this morning. The rise in cases comes as several schools across Arizona report outbreaks. J.O. Combs Unified School District sent a letter home to parents warning of new confirmed cases on campus, forcing them to close a school. Team 12's Trisha Hendricks has more on what's becoming a growing trend. Unfortunately, there's not a specific set of guidelines for everyone to follow. So the ultimate decision on quarantining measures and whether to stay open or close down temporarily is up to each district individually. Last night, the J.O. Combs district announced they're closing their high school until October 27th. And while they didn't say how many students or staff were infected, they did say two or more people tested positive is defined as an outbreak by the Pinal County Public Health Department. So they closed out of an abundance of caution after being directed to do so by public health officials. On the flip side, Mesa Public Schools still open with more than 28 COVID cases and outbreaks of two or more cases in five of their six high schools. Maricopa County Health's executive director says each school is going to be different depending on their resources. Are they able to make the classroom smaller? Are they able to spread out students in the classrooms? In Santan, six positive cases meant possible exposure for most of the staff. Flanagan tells us if they would have stayed open, more than 60% of the staff and several hundred students would be quarantining. We spoke with Mesa's Associate Superintendent Holly Williams. She tells us they're taking it case by case and relying on guidance from the Maricopa County Health Department. In Santan Valley, Trisha Hendricks, 12 News. And meanwhile, the University of Arizona is canceling spring break over COVID concerns. Instead, students will get five reading days spread out throughout the semester. With new information coming out almost by the minute, we know it's tough to keep up. So you can find the latest details about the coronavirus and how it's affecting Arizona on our 12 News app. COVID hits the campaign trail again. Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Kamala Harris is suspending in-person events until Monday after two people tied to the campaign tested positive for COVID-19. Neither person had any contact, though, with Harris or Biden. Time is running out. Today is the last day you can register to vote in Arizona before the November election. The registration deadline was originally extended last week until October 23rd, but an appeals court struck that down on Tuesday. And now the new deadline is today. Democratic Secretary of State Katie Hobbs said the extension imposes a heavy burden on some counties. Hobbs also talked with us about what we can expect for election results after the polls close. What I can assure you is that we are focused on being accurate. We will be accurate. Uh, the, the tabulation and everything that goes into it, into it will be secure. And these things take time. Bob says making sure everything is counted accurately is going to take some time and ask for patience. President Trump is scheduled to take part in a town hall meeting in Miami tonight on NBC. It's happening in place of the second presidential debate. You probably remember that debate was canceled after the president tested positive for coronavirus. He didn't want to take part in a virtual event, so the debate commission called it off. And at the same time as the president's town hall, Democratic challenger Joe Biden is holding a town hall of his own. That one will be broadcast on a different network. You can catch complete coverage of the dueling town halls tonight on 12 News. With the election just a few weeks away, there's a lot of misinformation out there. That's why we have our Verify team looking into viral claims you may see online, like whether unofficial ballot drop boxes are popping up across the country. Here's our Jason Puckett to Verify. You may have seen claims like these, that Republicans in California were creating, quote, fake drop boxes for voters. We're verifying, is this really happening and is it legal? Our sources are publications by the California Republican Party, the Fresno election website, and a statement from the California Secretary of State. Now, archived pages show that the state's GOP party set out 12 different Dropbox locations in Fresno County, but none of those 12 show up on the county's list of official Dropbox locations. 
Put simply, they weren't officially placed by the County Board of Elections. So the claim that California Republicans were creating unofficial drop boxes, verified. So is this legal? Well, there's debate over that question. Republicans in the California State Legislature and even U.S. Representative Ken Calvert have said they are acting within the state's laws. They see these as an extension of California's ballot harvesting laws, which make it legal for a third party to pick up and drop off ballots. But California Secretary of State and Attorney General sent a cease and desist letter to the California Republican Party, saying non-official drop boxes don't comply with state law governing ballot collection activities. California law does have requirements for having your ballot delivered by a third party. Namely, you have to write their name on your ballot, what their relationship is with you, and then they have to sign the outside of the envelope. Unofficial ballot boxes don't meet this standard. Now, this will likely become a larger legal battle that will have to be determined in the courts. As of now, these unofficial ballot boxes have only been reported in California. But election officials do say to make sure your ballot is definitely counted, go ahead and drop it off at an official drop-off location or in the mail. You can find a list of those locations on your local election board website. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Well, we have a team dedicated to helping you understand every piece of information you need for this upcoming election. Just head to 12news.com slash plan your vote. Now let's check your forecast 411. After setting an all time record for the most triple digit days this year, Jamie, please cool us down. Well, while we continue to wait for fall-like temperatures, we're continuing to enjoy some fall pictures coming into the 12 News Weather Watchers Facebook fan page. Fall colors on the rim, seeing more of those oranges and reds. My thanks to Jim for sending us this picture. And today, a very important day. It's National Cheese Curd Day. I personally prefer mine deep fried. You may not, but deep fried is a fantastic way to enjoy your cheese curds. 97, 98 degrees and beautiful blue skies overhead. The rest of the state, well, you're going to see Tucson at 96, a little upper level cloud cover moving by. Globe 91, 70s and 80s for much of the high country. Pace and Prescott at 86, Sedona 90 degrees, Lake Havasu 98. And the temperature outlook beyond the seven day forecast, indications are we're going to see a lot of cold air moving south, which means that our chances for above normal temperatures are dropping. That's beyond the seven day forecast when we already have a cooling trend taking place. Take a look at this. Your greater Arizona three day forecast. The numbers aren't moving a whole lot. The number numbers are continuing to remain above average, but we are avoiding triple digits quite easily. Now here's your seven day forecast. Sunny and warm today, a high of 98. That's still nine degrees above average. And we're looking for that cooling trend to start over the weekend. And remember, beyond this seven day forecast, we stay maybe just a little bit above average. We should see a lot of 90s coming up down the road. Sounds good. And Jamie, give me some of that deep fried cheese curd. I've never had it. Well, hashtag most clicked here. The story speaking everyone's interest right now. It looks like President Trump's nominee to the Supreme Court will be officially confirmed by the end of next week. As the final day of Amy Coney Barrett's Judiciary Committee hearing wrapped up, Chairman Lindsey Graham set the committee's vote for a week from today. The full Senate will vote the next day. If confirmed, Judge Barrett would fill the seat of the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Good news on the Valley lawmaker who contracted COVID-19. Representative Lorenzo Sierra has been released from the hospital. His wife posted the update on Twitter yesterday afternoon. Tonight, history will be made in Tempe. The city's first black police chief will be sworn in. Jeff Glover served with the Tempe Police Department for 20 years before he retired back in February. Well, now he is taking over as interim chief for police chief Sylvia Mower, who resigned. She was Tempe's first female police chief. It is the final day of Hispanic Heritage Month. All month long, 12 News has been honoring the contributions of Hispanic Americans to Arizona culture. Here's a look back at some of the amazing people we've met. My name is Maria Sanchez. I'm Adam Lopez Falk. Hi, my name is Eddie Murillo. My name is Elaine Cruz. Hispanic Heritage means to me. I believe that Arizona is enriched by, by Latino leadership. I just feel so deeply rooted here in Phoenix in our Latino community. It is, uh, it defines my, my cultural sensitivities, my food taste. Woo! I'm ready for it. Like everything else that I love in life, it just kind of burst out in everything that I do. And, and Latinos and, and are not just from Mexico, Latinos are from, from uh, dozens of countries. Mariachis are there for everything. 
absolutely everything. We bring such a rich culture, we bring a rich language, we bring a rich uh, uh, culinary palate, all these things that, that people love about our culture. Just her cooking from scratch, a lot of my home cooking, a lot of my Nana's dishes, my mom's dishes. It's really easy to incorporate my culture in my show because it's who I am. Representing this Latino community, it's core to who I am. I am a value member of this community because I feel I care. This is a part of you and who you are. My dad was the first Mexican-American pilot to fly over the state of Arizona. Serving in the military for me is an honor to be a great citizen of this country. I'm part of the Dreamer generation. Ten years ago, SB 1070 happened. Not only was it scary for our families, but it was also an attack on us and the fact that we couldn't even go to college because tuition went up. The struggles that my family went through is really worth it. All this crap that's going on right now, I don't think that nobody should put nobody down of their race and color or creed. This state has a, a deep, deep history of, of strong Latino leaders. We look back in our history of Raul Castro, uh, people like Ronnie Lopez, Ed Pastor. Being Mexican American, it's part of, of who I am. I can't deny it. I'm grateful, you know, that we can share that with everybody to progress and we progress and we get better at things. I think this message resonates with everybody. And be united, that's what I think the United States should be. We just come together, be united. Oh, that was such a great piece, great recap overall. Well, do you know someone going through a tough time right now? If so, we want you to nominate them for Miracle Makers. You can do that just that at 12news.com slash Miracle Makers. And that, folks, is your 12 at 12. The facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes, no commercials. We're always on anywhere, anytime.